Chapter 2 The sun was starting to snake over the mountains, nervously spilling little beams around the peaks as if it were making sure Darkstalker was gone. Clouds were visible in the north, with the gray haze of distant rain below them, but Jade Mountain was still dry and clear and sunlit. Turtle tucked the broken stick, knobbly and half-stripped of its bark, the most ordinary, insignificant-looking thing in the world, carefully into the pouch around his neck. He tied the pouch shut twice as tightly as usual and put his front claws over it as it rested on his chest. Anxiety twisted inside him. I'd better not lose this. He'd lost other animus-touched objects before. It was a little embarrassing, actually. When he was three, his many, many older brothers used to make fun of him for being the slowest deceiving prince in the ocean. Guess somebody gives me the right name. Careful, or a clownfish will get you. Some of a sea cucumber. So, Turtle had enchanted a strand of purple kelp, wound three times around his upper arm, to make him just a bit faster than some of his brothers. He couldn't make himself the fastest. That would attract attention. Attention was the last thing he wanted. But he could be faster than the other two from his hatching. Octopus and Cerulean. He could be a tiny bit faster than a couple of the four-year-olds, and that's where he'd stop. Then he'd be nothing remarkable, and his brothers would move on to teasing someone else. It worked. They got bored and left him alone after a couple more races. But he still wished he hadn't lost the kelp a few weeks later. It drifted off in his sleep one night, and he often wondered if there was a startled seahorse tangled up in it somewhere out there, speeding along the ocean floor. He knew he should be smarter about what he enchanted. He should pick things he couldn't lose, things that would last a while, but usually he didn't spend enough time thinking about his spells beforehand to plan them that carefully. His spells were also little, just small magic to make his life easier, and he generally used whatever he could grab with his claws when he needed one. Like the very ordinary looking river stone in his pouch, bumping along with a stick. It could heal surface wounds and aches and pains, and he'd enchanted it to make himself feel better after a long day of flying, but it was a silly thing to enchant. Peril was right about that. If he ever lost it, he'd never find it again. Same with this stick, so he had to be careful. He flew toward the main entrance of Jade Mountain, where he had landed on his first day as a new student. He remembered how excited he had been. A new school. Nobody knew him here. It was the perfect place to be a background character in another dragon's stories. No one would expect anything of him. He'd be far away from Octopus and Cerulean, who knew about his biggest failure and surely must think about it all the time, even if they never mentioned it. Here, he could blend in, be ordinary, and keep an eye on his little sister Anemone, who had been acting strangely ever since the attack on the Summer Palace. None of that had quite worked out the way he'd planned. It was his own fault. If he hadn't chased after the other dragons in this winglet, he could be sound asleep in the rest of the Seeming students right now. A splash and a peal of laughter caught his attention, and he soared over Jade Mountain following the sound to an opening in the roof of a cave. Down there was the underground lake, and there were dragons swimming in it even now at the crack of dawn. Turtle never woke up early if he could help it, but an enemy was often up at sunrise, which meant one of the swimming dragons might be her. I should warn her. Her more than anyone. He tucked his wings into a dive and arrowed through the hole, but he somewhat misjudged his speed and ended up smacking into the cold lake like a hippo and dropped from a great height. Yow! He yelped, surfacing and rubbing his eyes his scales stinging from the shock. Turtle? Said a voice nearby. <gasps> Turtle, you're back! Wet wings are flung around his shoulders, dunking him underwater in a cascade of bubbles. An enemy's glow-in-the-dark scales flashed happily at him in aquatic as she dragged him up into the air again. Hi. He sputtered at his sister. Hey! You nearly landed on the princess! Pike shouted in his ear. The skinny, gray-blue sea wing had always been a little louder and more aggressive than Turtle thought was strictly necessary. But he'd been much worse since they'd arrived at Jade Mountain Academy, thanks to some secret instructions from Queen Coral. Turtle knew from eavesdropping that Pike was here specifically to be a covert bodyguard for Princess Anemone. An enemy, of course, had no idea. She never seemed surprised that Pike was so easy to boss around. In her mind, that was how all sea wings were supposed to behave around her. Oh shush! I'm fine! An enemy splashed water at Pike's snout, and he backed off, shaking his head irritably. Turtle, where have you been? I had the weirdest nightmare just before I woke up. I thought there was an earthquake, but nobody else felt it. Did you find your winglet? Are they here too? Turtle seized her front claws in his. Anemone, I need to talk to you. You are talking to me, fish face. She said. Did you find the rain wing you were moping about? You mean Kinkajou? A little rain wing was sitting in the shallows of the lake, tilting her ears towards them. 
Her scales were spiraling pale peach and citrus green, except where they were covered by swaths of bandages and streaks of black scorch marks. A poultice of damp leaves was tied over her eyes. Is Kinkajou all right? I'm sure she's absolutely fine, Tamrin. Pike said kindly. He jabbed Turtle in the shoulder with one claw, much less kindly, and jerked his head towards Tamarin, scowling. Turtle hesitated. The last time he'd seen Kinkachu, she was lying in a hospital bed in the town of Possibility, unconscious. Her usually bright, shifting rainbow scales had turned white and still. She had hardly looked like Kinkachu at all. But how could he say that to her best friend, to Tamarin, who was suffering from her own injuries after the explosion that rocked Jade Mountain Academy? She was alive when I saw her a few days ago. He hedged. I'm sure she'll come back to Jade Mountain just as soon as she can. If it's still here when she wakes up. Oh. Tamarin said softly. Good. Anemone. Turtle said. Come flying with me. You are being such a jellyfish right now. Anemone sighed. <sighs> I don't want to fly. I want to swim. Can you just say whatever it is right here? Pike and Tamarin won't care. Oh, they might. Thought Turtle, but he could see that an enemy wasn't moving. This was an enemy's new, stubborn, petulant personality. The princess who'd risen to the surface after she was cut free from Mother's harness. This an enemy made him feel nervous. This an enemy made him feel guilty. Alright, fine. He said. You're in danger, and you need to leave Jade Mountain right now. What? Danger? Pike barked swiveling his head to glare around the dark cave. And go where? Anemone demanded. Home? Back to harnesses and boredom and mothers staring at me all the time? No, thank you. I'm staying here. She scrambled up one of the boulders that jutted out of the water and coiled her tail around her talons. But there's a big scary dragon coming, Turtle protested. Anemone looked archly down her snout at Turtle. Who are you talking about? She asked. I thought our illustrious teachers defeated all the bad dragons. This is a new one. Turtle glanced anxiously up at the sky above them, which was shifting closer and closer to full daylight. His name is Darkstalker, and he's been trapped underground for 2,000 years, and he just escaped. I don't really understand the whole story, but I know he's a mind reader, and an animus, and he seems nice on the surface, but- An animus! An enemy cried, interrupting him. She stood up, flaring her wings. Really? A real animus? Yes, Turtle said cautiously. But a bad one, like Albatross. Oh, how would you know? An enemy scoffed. I've been dying to meet another animus. I visited the old fossil living in this mountain and he was useless. His great helpful advice was that an animus dragon should never use her power. I mean, come on. He was all... But look what happened to me, Wheeze Moan Glug. And I wanted to be like, didn't you put this dopey stone scale spell on yourself? What use is your perfect soul if you can't move a muscle? So pathetic. If there's a real animus coming here, I want to meet him. No, Turtle protested. He'll probably kill you. He's really smart. He'll see another animus dragon as a threat. If he's really smart, he'll see that I'm awesome and want to get to know me. An enemy said, tossing her head. Uh, princess! Pike interjected. I think your brother is right. This sounds like a dangerous situation. You should hide while I assess this stranger. What? An enemy threw her wings up in disbelief. I'm not going to hide like some kind of nervous shrimp. Three moons, turtle. Did you actually see him kill anyone? No, but... According to history, he killed his dad and- According to history? She said dismissively. Has he hurt anyone since he escaped? No, but he probably will. He doesn't like ice wings, and he doesn't like me. Well, I'm not an ice wing, and I'm not the most boring prince on the planet. She said. So I think he'll like me just fine. Pike, shut up. Pike closed his mouth and ducked his head. Anemone clapped her front talons together. This is so exciting! Another animus to talk to! Guilt wormed through Turtle's heart again. He had thought about telling his sister a secret a hundred times. If he had ever admitted that he was a fellow animus, would she be more willing to listen to him? Should he tell her now? 
Would that stop her from wanting to meet Darkstalker? Probably not. And to tell her in front of Pike and Tamarin, it just didn't seem like a good idea. Pike was one of Queen Coral's most loyal followers. He'd definitely report back to her the first chance he got. Even an enemy. Would she keep his secret? He wasn't ready. Better to stay hidden and keep quiet. Safer that way. An enemy dove off a rock and paddled to the tunnel that led back to the school. Last one to the main hall is a rotten oyster! She called, galloping away into the dark. Pike hissed softly, twisting between the disappearing princess and the injured rain wing by the lake. It's all right, Pike, Tamarin said. She waded out of the water, limping and resting one talon lightly on the wall. I can find my way back to the infirmary on my own. Can you go with her? Pike asked Turtle. He was halfway to the tunnel already. I can take care of myself, Tamarin said through gritted teeth, limping another few steps. Turtle nodded, and Pike leapt out of the lake to run after an enemy. I know you two are making secret faces at each other. Tamarin said as Turtle climbed out of the lake beside her. I don't like it when dragons do that around me. Sorry, Turtle said. I was only responding to his secret faces. So is Kinkajou really alright, or were his faces making you lie to me? She asked. She set up toward the tunnel, stepping cautiously but confidently along the rocky lake shore. Turtle winced. She did get hurt. He admitted, following her. Pretty badly. She's still unconscious, as far as I know. But the doctor's impossibility thought she'd be all right if she wakes up soon. Oh, poor Kinkju! Tamarin cried. She stopped and pressed her talons to her face. I knew it was too dangerous for her out there. She's always running straight at the bad things instead of hiding, or at least thinking first. That's true, Turtle realized. That was one of the things he liked about Kinkju, that she was nothing like him. Queen Glory sent Rainwing healers to watch over her, he said. She's not alone. I wish I could go to her, Tamarin said with a sigh. She set off along the main passageway. After a moment, she said quietly, I didn't know an enemy was an animus. Turtle felt like an idiot. He'd been so worried about hiding his own powers, he'd forgotten that an enemies were supposed to be kept secret, too. The other tribes aren't supposed to know, he said. Tsunami's friends do, but they swore not to tell anyone. I won't say anything, Tamarin promised. That must be hard on an enemy, keeping a secret like that. I guess, Turtle said uncomfortably. He'd been keeping the same secret his whole life, but from everyone. Was it hard? Maybe sometimes. Like whenever something happened that he knew his magic could fix, but he had to go ahead and leave it broken. Like Tamarin's eyes. I could fix them. I could do it right now. I could enchant that bandage, so when she takes it off, she could see for the first time in her life. That was the kind of thing he wished he was free to do, and it felt awful to have to stop himself. But he still figured it was a lot easier to be a secret animus than an animus that everyone knew about. I wouldn't want to be an animus, Tamarin said. She paused at a spot where the tunnel branched in three directions. I don't know how anyone could stay a good dragon with all that power. What if they only used it for good things? Turtle asked, a little stung. Who gets to decide what's a good thing? Tamarin asked. Dragons will always be asking for spells, or telling you your choices are wrong. And I think sometimes it's hard to tell what's good, and what's just easy. Turtle gave her a puzzled look. Aren't those the same? What's wrong with trying to make life a little easier? It depends, Tamarin said. For instance, an animus dragon might think, I'll make all our medicinal herbs appear magically in the healer's treehouse, so we never have to go looking for them again. That seems obviously good, right? But then we'd stop learning how to look for them, and we'd stop experimenting with new ones to see how those might help dragons in different ways. We stop thinking about it at all, because everything will be too easy. Don't we lose something when everything is done for us? Turtle blinked at her, confused. I thought Rainwings were all lazy, he said. I thought your lives were easy, and you like them that way. Not mine, Tamarin said, gesturing to her eyes. Not kink you. Maybe we're a little different from the others. She shrugged. Anyway, I can see why an enemy wants another animus to talk to about it. Right said Turtle. His thoughts had snagged on Kinkachu and how she wasn't anything like the rain wings he'd read about in Mother's Stories. He hadn't thought about that before, because he didn't think Rainwing when he saw her. 
he only thought. Kinkajou. I'm really fine from here, said Tamarin, flicking her tail at one of the side tunnels. You go find Claire Tsunami with your news. She strode off to the left, limping as fast as she could, as if she wanted to prove she didn't need help. Turtle took the path all the way to the right, winding up through the mountain towards the Great Hall. Halfway there, he heard voices coming from one of the caves. Instinctively, he slowed down and snuck closer on quiet talons. He'd always been good at eavesdropping. It made his life easier, knowing what other dragons whispered about behind closed doors. He'd avoided several palace scandals and feuds that way. This might be the kind of thing Tamron is talking about. He realized uncomfortably. The way I make my life easier, that's not exactly good. Mother feels terrible, said one of the voices quietly. She can't figure out how they escaped. Can she trust her guards? Asked another voice, which Turtle recognized as a sister Tsunami. Maybe she needs to replace them all with outclaws. Everyone knows their undying loyalty to Thorn. But she needs her best outclaws in other parts of the kingdom, said the first voice. That must be Sunny, Turtle realized. There was an explosion at one of our western oases a couple of days ago. Two dragons were killed, and we have no idea why. Was it one of those viper-looking cactus bombs like the one here? Asked Tsunami, growling. Seems like it. Sunny sighed. But it makes no sense that a Skywing would be out that far west, or targeting these dragons. Anyway... Mother has enough problems, and now she's worried that Glory will be mad at her. She won't be, right? Glory knows how tough it is being a new queen. Of course, said Tsunami. On the other talon, Thorn did promise to hang on to those prisoners for her. And who knows what they'll do now that they've escaped. I bet they'll go try to kill Glory. Or you. They hate you too, don't they? See, this is why I always come to you with my problems. Sunny said. Because you're always so comforting. <laughs> I can make a stab at comforting. Tsunami joked. Let me try. Um, hey, it's only two dragons, right? Uh, they won't be able to do anything. Deathbringer will totally stop them if they go anywhere near her. I mean, that is his entire purpose in life, as far as I can tell. And if they kill him, Glory will take them down with her magical death spit. So, don't worry, pat, pat, pat. Hmm. Said Sunny. That was very... stabby comforting? There was the scrape of claws against rock, and Turtle realized they were coming toward the cave entrance. He backed up to act as though he was walking along the corridor when the two dragons emerged. Turtle! Tsunami's face lit up with such delight that he felt ashamed of spying on her. By all the moon sunny look, a student from the Jade Winglet is actually here, at school, where they're supposed to be. What a glorious honor. Is it my hatching day, or am I hallucinating? All right, enough sarcasm, Sunny said, elbowing her in the chest. Turtle, we've been really worried. Is everyone else back too? Well, they're coming, he said. I'm here to warn you. They're coming with someone else. Maybe a bad someone else. Have either of you heard of Darkstalker? Sunny jumped and gave him a startled look. I have. When I was chasing Fierce Teeth and the others, I heard them talking about this ancient Nightwing legend. A dragon called Darkstalker. They were crazy scared of him. Like he might actually be hunting them right that minute even though he died, like, centuries ago. Um, so, that's the thing, said Turtle. He didn't so much exactly die. What? Tsunami demanded, lashing her tail. He's woken up, Turtle said. And he's on his way here right now. There was a gasp from further up the tunnel. They all turned and found a Nightwing Dragonette standing there, staring at Turtle, with his face contorted in terror.